What is up my dashing dudes? I am the Hans TV, and today we're checking out a subreddit for the channel that one of you lovely dudes suggested. It's r slash just no mill. Our first post for the day comes from Amazing Apple 56. Guess who haven't left yet? This witch. So today is Seolol, the Korean New Year, and currently my father-in-law is at my house. This story gets messy AF, and DH shined the spine of the year yesterday to make this happen. After Mama Shirley's tirade earlier this week, DH has been kinda quiet. We had our first therapy session Thursday, yay, and it went amazing for him. He's super excited to go back. I'm happy for him. On the way home from the session, DH blurts out when we are halfway there, I, I think my mom, is she just a racist? Okay. Someone here had messaged me the same thought and it got to me. I started to think, sister-in-law married a white man and she adores those kids no matter the age. She loves my kids when they are babies, but she kind of wears off. DH pointed out how racially ambiguous our kids look when they are babies. He called our youngest Brad for like the first year of his life because he was so bright, but as they age they naturally get darker. He also spoke out about how she didn't want any of her grandkids to have traditional Korean names, and how he barely saw father-in-law's parents when they were growing up, even though they lived in the same town. He said she practically made them grow up without their Korean heritage, and he had to sneak to learn the language. He brought this up without me prompting him to. I think he was searching for a plausible reason for her behavior towards our oldest LO, and her behavior towards me throughout the years. We won't even talk about the wedding. That's a horse for a different time. Anyway, on Friday he comes home with father-in-law. Y'all, he took a half day at work, went to pick up his father, only to come back. MS wasn't there, which is shocking since she can't be bothered to leave her house for us. But I digress. Anyway, he told me he wanted to celebrate Sayalaw with us this weekend, which I only know a little bit about, by basically just having some traditional dishes. Well, he took just yes father-in-law to the local Asian market and they bought back everything we could need and he and his father are cooking lunch slash dinner today. I cannot tell you how excited oldest LO is right now, but this wouldn't be on this board and this MS didn't lose her crap. I guess she can kinda sense she is losing some control over DH. Previously she's always had him under her thumb and he jumped whenever she mentioned for him too. Yesterday evening, I guess when she got home from her little grandma gossip session, she discovered Just Jess' father-in-law wasn't home and decided to call DH. He answers promptly. He usually doesn't, so this is where I could tell his spine was starting to harden. I only hear this side of the conversation here. Yes? Probably some BS about where the father-in-law is. Oh, he's over here with us for the weekend. She's yelling incoherently. Are you going to calm down and talk? She screeches like a banshee. He speaks in Korean, and she starts screeching even louder, and he continues speaking in Korean despite her. Can she scream any louder? More on this at 11. Sorry you feel that way. Click. Not two minutes later, DH's sister texts him. Apparently Mama Shirley is thinking about pressing kidnapping charges. I don't know how that would work since Just Jess' father-in-law is a grown, independent adult, who is legally not in her care for anything, but go off. Sister also says that MS also plans on making another appearance at my house today, so we'll see. I'm not sure how things work over in Korea, which I'm assuming is where y'all are, but can't you just like ban her from your house? I know you can do that over where I live. If not, just don't put up with her BS anymore, dude. That's all I can give you. This next post comes from Pacific Solstice. Just no mother-in-law? Ruined our engagement and tea day in one fell swoop. Hello all, I'm new here. It's such a relief to finally find some other people who definitely know what I'm dealing with. My just no mother-in-law has been in my life for a long freaking time, but I didn't realize I had a problem until the day I got engaged. Woohoo, welcome to the family. I'll just go ahead and start there, so we don't have ourselves an epic. Some backstory on the situation? My boyfriend at the time and I had been together for the better part of a decade and had recently moved to a new state far away from our hometown. We settled in, bought our first house, and everything was super peachy. So peachy, in fact, we got the crazy idea that maybe we could host Thanksgiving 
so we could all invite our family into our new home and take some of the holiday burden off of our mothers. What could possibly go wrong? What we didn't realize at this point is just how deep the control complex is with just no mill. Although she happily agreed to this plan and raised no concerns, she was secretly very upset. So that festered until a couple of weeks before the holiday, at which point my boyfriend's sister and her two kids decide they can't make it after all. We figure, hey, that's too bad, but she's an adult and makes her own decisions. We can see them at Christmas, right? Just No Mill is quietly at the bullying point. Just No Mill must have all family at all holidays because that time is special and can never be replaced. We are doomed and don't even know it. So the day before tea day arrives, my family arrives and it's ooh, ah, what a cute house. I'm cooking dinner and his parents arrive. Father-in-law is warm and normal acting. Just No Mother-in-law is also there. Although, looking kind of witchy. Cool, whatever, she just looks like that sometimes. Father-in-law is a wine guy, thank heavens, and pulls out the vino. Time for a toast, new home, holidays, huzzah. My boyfriend takes the toast over and I honestly don't remember what he said because I got my wits about me when he was on his knee proposing. Elation, I'm over the moon. We had never been in a hurry about it, but he was right. The time is now. I'm on cloud nine and go to greet my in-laws-to-be. Father-in-law is obviously joyous in a believable way. Just know mother-in-law lets me know that she had to go pick up the ring. Nobody else was available to do it. An odd thing to contribute? Thank you? We serve dinner and all is well until Just No Mill starts talking about relationships. She starts on how they don't always work out and that we should take our time. I believe eight years is a significant chunk of time to verify that things will indeed work out. Am I right? But no, not to Just No Mill. She goes on to tell the whole table, mind you, my whole immediate family is here listening to her, that we should avoid having kids in case we need to divorce. We've been engaged no more than an hour, and the woman is treating our joyous occasion like an accident. In front of my family. I'm endlessly ashamed. I have no words to stop her. What the hell is happening? She pouts and spouts off more garbage for the rest of the trip. I'm depressed and shocked, and my fiancé has no words to console me. I go through with the holiday and cook the feast, but F her. She ruined it. I'll never get that bitter taste out of my mouth. This happened a few years ago, so mostly just TLC needed. I'm not nuts, right? She makes me feel nuts. I mean, OP, you do hold the right to kick her out of your life. She does not have to be in your life. I know it'd be hard for your fiancé, which is probably not your husband, but it'd be better in the end for y'all. Anybody else getting really, really mad at these stories? No, just me, alright. This next post comes from Externalities Costly. My boyfriend's mom went on a power trip because of a toothpick. Really? My boyfriend's mother is a control freak who always finds a way to boundary stomp. We have had tons of issues with her, and I'm at my wit's end, ready to pack my things and my dog and leave my boyfriend. Yesterday we came to visit her and she baked a cake. Okay, nice. The cake was really bad, with the center being completely raw. Dough-like. I didn't say anything even when she went on a defensive tirade about how it isn't perfect, but she likes cake batter and eating something like that causes no issues. Since I spent a week at the hospital because of salmonella, I highly disagree. My boyfriend told her that she could check if the cake is ready or not by using a toothpick and checking the middle of the cake and she immediately got more defensive. Telling him that she doesn't want to open the oven repeatedly as all bakers say that's bad. As if my boyfriend told her to check it tons of times. He just said the trick. She went to the kitchen with a toothpick and inserted it at the middle of the cake. The cake was so raw that even six hours after being baked, the toothpick came off completely dirty and with cake batter. <laughs> our dog, who is always hungry and loves his sweets, saw her going to take the cake and immediately went to her. And then the unthinkable happened. She tried to give him the toothpick to lick at a slightly higher height than him and not with the toothpick straight. Just giving him a toothpick is awful but with these things, it's the freaking worst nightmare scenario. 
My boyfriend freaked out and told her, Stop. Don't give him the toothpick. She ignored him. He repeated it, and she told him that she wasn't doing anything bad. It's just so our dog could taste it. He told him, Stop. He can jump and you can hurt him. She once again told him, No, it's fine. He shot it two times, and she finally took the toothpick from near our dog, who was trying to lick it. And then she looked at my dog and said, My boyfriend is scolding me, but it doesn't matter. The nerve. My boyfriend told her, Mom, you have to admit that was a horrible idea. Of course, she didn't. My dog could have blinded himself, could have hurt himself by jumping to the toothpick, could have eaten it, could have grabbed it and started running it with her mouth because of her need to control everything. She went on a power trip with a freaking toothpick. I'm angry, and my boyfriend is making me even angrier with his, but I spoke. Yeah, he spoke, but our dog could have been seriously hurt while they were arguing. It's not enough. He should have stood up and took the toothpick from her. When we say something related to our dog, it's not up to her to decide if she agrees or not. But I don't think my boyfriend fully grasps it. While they were going on, my dog was seriously near a toothpick and hysterically trying to grab it. He could have been hurt because my boyfriend thinks verbal warnings are enough, even when his mother blatantly disrespects and ignores him, and because his mother is a control freak who has to find a way to show her dominance over us. Things similar to this happen every time we visit. I told my boyfriend I won't have any children with him as she's unable to respect us, and I won't, nor will my children adhere to that. I don't want my children to see someone disrespecting me or him, and us being completely apathetic to that nor will I stand to the opinions of his mom towards his children. He's super angry because of that, telling me one thing is his mom, one thing it's him, and that's with him, and I'm having children, but I don't see it like that, and I'm fed up. Our final post for the day comes from Wintergreen1234. Today, I messed up. My mother-in-law, as with many mother-in-laws on here, is a horrible human. She's a narcissist and has manipulated my husband since birth. We have a long history of identity theft with her, and I've been no contact for several years now. My husband still sees her about once a month when she's back at the ER, dying again. Lately, his stepfather has been talking about him joining the family business. I am very against this, as I know it's just another tool to hold control over him. We got into an argument today, and during this, his mom called to tell him she was dying again, and he rushed to the ER. I responded, I can't wait until the day she does this and she really does drop dead. That will be the best day of my life. The minute I said it and saw the look on his face, I knew I messed up. As much as I hate her and as much horrible stuff that she's done to him, that's still his mother and he loves her. He hasn't talked to me since and I'm sure I'll be a bit before he's ready. I feel like an ass, but it's not a lie and I won't be crying at her funeral. That was brutal, and I know that he's going to be mad, and I agree that he should be, but at the same time he should see how they're manipulating him, and he should be even more angry with that. But with that being said, I'm going to end our first episode of r slash just no mill here. Uh, I hope you liked the stories, and if you did, I'll link them down in the description as always. And if you liked the video, subscribe, share, drop a comment, and a like below with what you'd like to see me read next. A humongous thank you to everyone who has subscribed in the past few months. I cannot thank y'all enough for what y'all do for the channel and the love that y'all show. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.